After nearly a decade of failed attempts to bring a live action version of Lock and Key to life, Netflix has finally delivered the goods. But was it worth the wait? Based on the graphic novel of the same name, written by Joe Hill and illustrated by Gabriel Rodriguez, the series centers on the Locke children, Tyler, Kinsey, and Bodie, and their mother Nina, who move to their ancestral home of Key House after the family's patriarch, Rendell, is murdered. Fans of the comic book's graphic violence and creepy visuals may be a bit disappointed that Netflix's version leans more into the whimsical aspects of Hill's narrative and less on the terror and bloodshed. It's impossible to ignore the changes in tone and lack of adult content. However, if the streaming giant's goal is to appeal to a larger audience, then the series succeeds with some terrific set pieces, aesthetics, and performances from the leading cast that make season one's 10 episode arc a worthy binge. One of the standout characters in Lock and Key is not an actual person, but the house itself. Big props to the production designers for creating a location that truly feels alive. Every room is meticulously detailed with fascinating little trinkets and decor that add a layer of mystery to the story, and may even cause you to pause on particular scenes just to take in all the details. While siblings Tyler and Kinsey do have their own adventures with the keys, it's their younger brother Bodie who has the most fascinating encounters with their magic in Season 1. Since this version of Lock and Key is a little more family friendly than the comics, Bodie's youthful exuberance after discovering each key is honestly infectious. Tyler and Kinsey's adventures in the first half of the season, when they're not teaming up with Bodie, are less pivotal to the overall story and are usually relegated to high school drama, like using the keys to get revenge on mean girls or trying to impress a potential love interest. These high school hijinks occasionally make the show feel more like a CW teen drama than an ambitious mystery, and Lock and Key feels far more engaging when it leans into its fantastical elements. One particular standout on that front is the head key which enables the series to get creative with its visuals while also playing with body horror. The key is inserted into the back of someone's neck to literally open the door into their mind, which then allows a person to relive important memories, which allows the audience to see the kids interacting with their father, adding believable weight and grief to those relationships. These scenes are great character building moments for the kids and are so well realized, it's easy to forget this is all happening because of a magical key. This confident blend of fantasy and real-world drama is Lock and Key's greatest strength. Where the series gets into trouble is when it tries to tackle too many narratives at once. The series is simultaneously attempting to be a compelling family drama, supernatural thriller, murder mystery, and high school dramedy throughout season one. And by attempting to serve several masters, it never completely feels like a cohesive whole. While the family storyline and the fantasy elements involving the keys work well, other aspects of the plot aren't quite as memorable. One example of this is Season 1's villain, a mysterious figure who torments the Locke family in the hopes of taking possession of their keys. While her incredible on-screen presence can be alternately charming and menacing, as the central villain, you'd expect her to be a truly terrifying figure, but even when she kills someone in a way that should be shocking in any other situation, the show often leans into the absurd humor of her actions rather than ramping up the tension undercutting some of the show's biggest scares. As much trouble as the Lock kids get into, it's difficult to imagine something horrible happening to them, even with an antagonist like her lurking in the shadows. Netflix's Lock and Key hits the mark when it comes to its slick visuals and a focus on the powerful bonds within the Lock family. However, the series struggles to instill any real terror from its main villain due to its focus on whimsy over horror. If Netflix is going broad with its adaptation to make the series more accessible for viewers who have no history with the franchise, then on those terms, it succeeds. Bottom line, Lock and Key Season 1 is an enjoyable binge that's easily digestible for fans and newcomers alike. But those who are hoping for a wholly faithful adaptation may feel frustrated by some key changes. For more Netflix reviews, check out what we thought of Season 1 of The Witcher and Dracula, and be sure to subscribe to IGN wherever you like to watch. <laughs>